Larry, you first, my friend. NBC is reporting that the Biden campaign now sees Florida, Florida, Trump's adopted home state, as winnable after the state Supreme Court rulings. Do you think they have a chance here? Well, it's April. Uh, sure, I'll go along with that. Uh, anything's possible in April. Uh, we'll believe it when there's cash on the barrel head for a major TV program. But it at least opens the door to it. And I'm sure that the Biden campaign will be playing lots of mind games uh, about Florida with the Trump people, as they should, because this really is a terrible development for Trump and the Republicans generally, not just in Florida, but in all those other states you just mentioned, including maybe Arizona and Nevada, two other swing states. And beyond that, uh, anything that happens in a mega state like Florida, any horror story that may be coming forth because of the six week ban uh, beginning in May, that's gonna be a national story. So it's going to affect voters everywhere. But, Susan, Democrats don't have to play mind games when it comes to abortion. We have seen abortion rights win whenever they are on the ballot, post-Roe being overturned. Describe for us how effective this has been for Democrats, especially in those red states. Well, that's right. You've seen when the actual issue of abortion, as opposed to the question of a pro or anti-abortion rights candidate, that it has been a winning thing. You think about a state like Kansas, a deep red state, continues to be a Republican state, and yet overwhelming response in an August, a hot summer referendum. People came out to vote in order to uh, reinstate and to protect abortion rights. In Florida, though, there's a couple interesting points about this. First of all, there's a 60 percent threshold for this referendum, which is higher than some of the other referendums uh, in Ohio, for example, recently, where there was a victory in another red state for abortion rights, it did not pass 60 percent. And so if that had been the number required in Ohio, it would not have passed. Now, arguably, there is uh, 60 percent support in Florida for this. And so they're likely to achieve that and certainly to increase the turnout among Democrats and among abortion rights supporters in November. So I think that's important. But, you know, again, I'm, I'm with Larry. I'm particularly interested in whether states that are actual battleground states like Arizona and Nevada end up having abortion on the ballot this fall. I think that's different than Florida, which at the moment is just sort of a dream for Democrats to take back a state that uh, really hasn't been possible for them in a long time. 19 percent uh, victory for Ron DeSantis in the last gubernatorial election there. OK, that might be a dream for Democrats, but this thing is turning out to be a potential nightmare for Trump. Charlie, is the problem for Trump that the majority of the country does not want an abortion ban, but his strongest, most loyal voting bloc are evangelicals who are single issue voters and it's anti-abortion. This is a very complicated issue for Donald Trump. I, I guess I look at this in a, in a different way. Um, look, I, I think it's a little bit of wish casting to think that Joe Biden is going to win in Florida, but this will have national implications because Republicans are going to have to take a stand on this and Donald Trump is eventually going to have to take a stand on it. And here's three numbers to keep in mind. The Florida abortion ban is almost total. It is six weeks. Republicans, um, including Donald Trump, seem to be thinking of a 15-week national ban. But the Florida referendum, which, again, it's either going to be a complete ban or the Florida referendum, doesn't put a specific number on. It talks about viability, fetal viability, which is about 23 or 24 weeks. That is going to appeal to a lot of libertarians, a lot of Republicans. It's going to appeal to a lot of moderates. One of the things the Republicans want to do is flip the script on Democrats and say, well, you want late-term abortions. You want abortion up until the moment of birth. That's not what the Florida referendum says. So this has the real possibility of splitting Republicans on this issue. And what happens in Florida will play in every state. It is a national issue. Abortion is going to be on the ballot in all 50 states, one way or another. And uh, Donald Trump, um, you know, frankly, has gone out of his way not to let himself get pinned down on this. But in Florida, he's either going to have to go yes or no, either a complete ban at six weeks or a much more liberal ban that will pull much higher at the viability 23 or 24 weeks. That's going to be tough to see how he, he navigates that. But, Susan, if he does that, what happens to this 
die-hard, strong base that he has, which are evangelicals. Exactly. They don't want to hear yeah, from, from I, a Christian Yeah, absolutely. Steph, I, I, I'm with you on this. I think that Donald Trump uh, cannot afford to alienate and anger this uh, very conservative white evangelical base that is the reason that he was elected president in the first place. Uh, without them, you know, he's busy pandering to them in every which way possible, including selling them $60 uh, <laughs> Bibles right now. Uh, and there's no way that this cynical transactional politician can afford to cut loose this part of the base. And I would also say the idea is, you know, kind of preposterous that Donald Trump isn't going to somehow be accountable for what's happened to reproductive rights in this country. He is the owner, it seems to me, of uh, the decision by the Supreme Court to throw out Roe versus Wade. Uh, Donald Trump has been happy to brag about his transformation of the Supreme Court. He's got to own the consequences of that. And I think politically speaking, this is a very damaging issue for him in November, even if uh, the prospect of Democrats winning Florida still seems pretty remote to me. Larry, Donald Trump and the misinformation machine is truly Trump's, uh, you know, secret weapon. But maybe not when it comes to abortion. I want you to look at a bit of the Biden campaign's new ad out today after the Florida decision. Here's just a piece of it. For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. In 2016, Donald Trump ran to overturn Roe v. Wade. Now, in 2024, he's running to pass a national ban on a woman's right to choose. I'm running to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Larry, on most issues, Donald Trump can push misinformation, he can dodge, he can deflect. But is this the one issue where he cannot? Because Roe did get overturned. The bans are happening in states across the country. So is Joe Biden doing the right thing in going all out and telling this story? Oh, absolutely. And it has to be done day after day after day. I think you said there were 217 days left. So I'd suggest that it be done for 217 days. This is the Achilles heel, not just for Trump, but also for the Republican Party. And Trump knows he's cornered. He has known this all along. He's worried about the abortion issue because there is no way for him to evade responsibility for what has happened. He's the one who put those three critical Supreme Court judges, uh, justices on the Supreme Court. They're the ones who made the difference. They're the ones who have caused all of this pain and, and angst throughout the country. And there's going to be a lot more of it because of this six-week abortion ban in Florida. Uh, even many people in the in the anti-abortion movement say six weeks is ridiculous. So, uh, you know, congratulations. Be careful what you wish for. You got it. You're going to have to live with it. And if Democrats are smart and on this issue, they are. They're going to make sure that Trump owns it morning, noon and night and maybe in the middle of the night when he's on true social. Susan, new topic. Donald Trump on the trail is getting nastier and darker in his language around migrants. Some people say this kind of language is going to backfire on him. We are a country of immigrants. But will it? He used this very dark language back in 16 when he was to announce that he was running. And today, immigration is a bigger issue for voters. Yeah, that's right. I mean, look, the idea that Donald Trump is going to face a penalty for bad language, uh, if that were the case, then he wouldn't be in politics. Uh, you know, I think somebody mm -hmm. counted uh, one of his last rallies. He he insulted or uh, used epithets, nasty words for President Biden, something like five dozen times. Uh, you know, that's his political brand is insults is racism, is attacks. Uh, I think the level of hysteria that he's seeking to whip up uh, around immigration, this is Trump's playbook. He, he believes that this is the reason that he won election to the presidency in the first place in 2016. So it's no surprise that he's resorting to this once again. Uh, he'd much rather be talking about immigration right now than be talking about abortion, the, the subject of yes. the rest of our conversation tonight. And there's a reason for that politically speaking, I think this is the biggest signal and, and, and dog whistle to his base stuff. And I think you're going to hear a lot more of it in the next few months. He is talking immigration, but again, yes. he's not telling the truth. In Michigan, he talked about a woman 
who was tragically murdered. Authorities there say someone in the U.S. illegally has confessed to killing her. And I want to share what Donald Trump had to say. Ruby's loved ones and community are left grieving for this incredible young woman, remembering what they called her. They said she had just this most contagious laughter. And when she walked into a room, she lit up that room. And I've heard that from so many people. I spoke to some of her family. But here's the thing. Her own sister, who is grieving her death, had to come out publicly and say that was a flat out lie. Donald Trump did not speak to any of her family members. But the thing is, Donald Trump's version is everywhere. I'm probably going to hear about it from my parents this weekend. How does the Biden campaign even deal with that? They're not just running against someone, you know, based on policy. He's out there pushing lie after lie, and it's sticking. President Biden's new campaign message appears to be paying off. According to a new morning consult poll, Biden is now leading Trump by 2 percent among all voters and making some serious gains among independents, too. With me now to discuss two of my favorites, MSNBC contributor and Voto Latino president and CEO Maria Teresa Kumar and Michael Steele, former chairman of the Republican National Committee and former lieutenant governor of Maryland. He co-hosts the hit weekend show, The Weekend, right here on MSNBC. Maria, these are positive numbers for the president, but this race is still close. What are you thinking? Well, the fact that he's already starting to take a lead against Trump and it's still so early and people are finally starting to see the message and the translation of his policies means that it can only get better for Biden right now. One of the biggest kept secrets that people have not highlighted was the impact of student loans on young voters. There was a recent poll that just came out just two days ago, Stephanie, that said that young voters really are starting to feel the relief of student loan forgiveness. We're talking over we're talking about billions of dollars in student loan forgiveness. When you want to grow the base, and the only way you can grow that base is by young voters in battleground states like Arizona and Nevada, North Carolina. Michael, I, I think I lost Maria's audio. Even though President Biden is making substantial gains with independence, that same poll shows that 19 percent of this key group says they will vote for someone else, and that someone could be RFK Jr. and his new VP pick, Nicole Shanahan. What do you make of all of this and more specifically his VP choice? Because for all these people who say, oh, he's going to pull from Trump, he could have chosen somebody far more conservative than Shanahan, but he didn't. He didn't. And, and, and the goal for RFK Jr. is not to pull from Trump. Uh, he's aiding and abetting Trump at every turn he possibly can. How do I, why do I say that? How do I know that? Because Fox loves him. He's a, he's a staple on Fox. So that tells you everything you need to know about that. That's one. Two, the play with the younger uh, vice presidential choice clearly is a direct appeal to uh, generational voters, uh, younger voters, um, young professional voters, uh, young suburban moms, um, uh, for example. Um, so there's this appeal that she brings to the table. Here's the rub. At the end of the day, uh, I will be I will be floored if he gets anywhere near what Roth Perot got back almost 40 years ago. Um, and and that's because despite all the fanciful dancing around and the noise making, the country is still largely aligned with the two parties. So what that means is the votes that he gets comes out of somebody's hide. And that hide, as we saw with Ross Perot in 1992, is the Republican uh, uh, nominee. Why? Because most of those voters that move in that direction tend to be center-right voters from, uh, you know, disaffected Republicans, uh, conservative independent voters. And so that, that play is one that has a tendency in this environment to work in reverse. In other words, instead of the Republican losing that vote, Joe Biden is considered the more stable uh, uh, voter. Uh, and, and so that hurts him as opposed to hurting uh, someone like Donald Trump. And it's a, it's a mixed up bag, but you know, this is where the campaign finds itself with someone like RFK in the mix. 
Maria, I keep hearing anecdotally, oh, no, RFK is going to pull from Trump, you know, especially this new woman. You know, she kind of appeals to the, the libertarian crowd or, you know, he's dabbled in the anti-vaccine and that goes to more MAGA folks. However, that's anecdotal. Yesterday, RFK Jr.'s own words, he said that Joe Biden is a greater threat to our democracy than Donald Trump is. With a statement like that, isn't it a pretty clear admission that he wants Donald Trump to win? A hundred percent. And I think that this is where we really need to have a frank conversation with voters who think that a third party candidate in the United States has a shot at the White House. They don't. All it is is a spoiler. And he is basically echoing and parroting Donald Trump. And let's be very clear. The fact that he is an anti-vaxxer is so dangerous for the American public. We had measles practically eradicated in this country. And now we see measles cases going up because children are not getting vaccinated because of the lies that he is peddling. He is risking American lives to make real decisions on behalf of their families. Instead, he perpetuates conspiracy theories. This is not a joke. This is not a drill. We've seen this before. He is Trump light, and people need to be very clear that when it comes to a time to cast a vote, it has to be for someone who is pro-democracy. And he clearly has the sentiments of Donald Trump where he likes to perpetuate lies in order to make himself feel bigger. So, Michael, if and what should the Biden campaign do about this? Everything in their power to de to diminish his is any momentum he has. Uh, certainly, I, I think it says a lot that RFK's own family. I mean, I mean, like all of them <laughs> are saying, <laughs> say, "Oh no, America, y'all don't want to do this. You don't want to go into the room with him. with him." No. <laughs> It's so funny. Exactly. I, I saw him on TV try to say to an interviewer, listen, does your family agree with you on everything? And I thought, no, I am sure my mother doesn't like my hair tonight. But if I were running for president, you're damn right. She'd be voting for me. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the app store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.